With this video, we begin a series of hopefully five or six short videos on psychoanalytic understanding of dreams. We will talk about the importance of Freud's seminal book, The Inter Interpretation of Dreams, and then we will go through more contemporary approaches to this mysterious phenomenon. But this initial video with which we start today is not on dreams at all. It is on the mechanism of repression that it seems to me has to be understood if one wants to understand the early psychoanalytic attempts to decipher dreams. So repression was understood by Freud to be a defense mechanism, and not just one of the defense mechanisms, but for Freud possibly the most important one. He wrote about it in several places at the end of the 19th century in the interpretation of dreams and then devoted a separate paper to it in 1950. The reason for this is that Freud thought repression was the mechanism that mostly explained the dynamics between the unconscious and the conscious how things move between the two of them, how they influence one another, that was mostly under the control of the mechanism of repression. So to begin with, Freud hypothesized that there was a line between the unconscious and the conscious, that there was a boundary line between these two instances of personality and this line was imagined by Freud to be very thick, not really permeable, so what was in one of the two tended to stay there and would not be able to go from one into the other very easily. The mechanism of repression was supposed to be what could bring, push, some mental images from the consciousness into the unconscious. So we all have some thoughts, wishes, images, fantasies in our minds that are prohibited, not allowed, improper, unseemly, whatever. And then the question is what are we going to do with them? Especially in the case of small children, we could get very much afraid of what could the consequence of such a thought be. In Freud's opinion, most of these images would have very similar destiny. Under the influence of the mechanism of repression, they would be pushed into the unconscious, so beyond the line of separation, and they would stay there for minutes or hours or decades. Once they are in there, we would not be able to approach them, most probably we wouldn't even like to, we would not be able to remember them. Now a couple of very important details are also necessary here. First, Freud thought that it was mental images that we can repress. So you can repress the image of beating someone you don't like or having sex with someone you like but is prohibited and so on. But you cannot repress the emotions or the drives that are associated with this image. The image disappears because defense mechanisms are more powerful than men mental representations. But the emotions and the drives, on the other hand, are more powerful than defense mechanisms, so they remain. A big question then is what will happen with the energy that initially was associated with the image, that's lost the image now and could be unattached to any mental representation, at least for a time. Therefore, it's very important that other defense mechanisms can be employed. 
that we can attach this energy to another image, that we can redirect it somewhere or sublimate it somehow, so that it will not remain free-floating, because then it can cause trouble, and this trouble most often is symptoms. On the other hand, repression is one of the most expensive defense mechanisms. It constantly spends our energy because the images that are in the unconscious are very often pushing back and they want to return. So repression not only is taking something out of our consciousness, but it is also the energy that makes the, this boundary line thick and effective. These images that want to return to our consciousness find, discover, that it's very difficult to do so, and that there are only special moments and special situations when this is possible to do. Freud also used the term sensor for this line and for the mechanism that keeps unconscious and conscious ideas separated. So, for the unconscious repressed mental images to return, they have to wait for the sensor not to be very active, not to be very awake. Situations like that are many, very often controversial, very often liked, popular. One of them is being drunk, taking drugs like LSD or something that brings images from our conscious that we are not usually in contact with. Another one is be being very close to someone, singing together. Another one is the most frequent, the most simple of them all, falling asleep. Freud believed that when we fall asleep, the sensor also falls asleep, or at least takes a nap. So all of a sudden the barrier becomes thinner, or there are holes in it, or there are passes through it, and some images from the unconscious can find their way, and they enter our consciousness, and the next morning we can remember them. So this is the connection between the topographical model, the relationship between the unconscious and the consciousness, the basic defense mechanism Freud hypothesized, and the root of dreams. From now on, in the coming videos, we will turn to how it would be possible to interpret the dreams.